Tesla has hit quite a milestone. It is now included in the S&P 500 index. And I don't have to tell you all how impressive the stock's performance has been this year with the stock up 728% and still soaring. So it has earned the gold medal of the street stock of the year. Joining me on this very special occasion is Rob Maurer, host of Tesla Daily and Jim Cramer. Jim, you and I have spoken extensively about Tesla and you've gone from being a skeptic to a believer. So is the stock more powered by the investors themselves rather than the company's innovation? Um, I think that people want a piece of the company's innovation. They don't know where it's going to go. I think that uh, Elon Musk is uh, someone who gives you a chance to participate in his genius. Uh, It is obvious that he makes the most superior cars or else he'd have to advertise. It's obvious that he's got um, a a tremendous ideas, some tremendous ideas in solar that aren't talked about. But I think he's just he's a technologist in an industry where technology has been uh, stillborn. Uh, he continues to innovate. And that's why I, I just think the world of him and think the world of the stock. And I'm not backing away just because it's supposed to go down after it's uh, added to the S&P. I don't think it'll do that. It's a technology stock that's worth $600 billion, And that's a reasonable valuation for a great technology company. Rob, I'm not going to lie here. I remember scoffing when I saw ARK Invest 2024 price target of $7,000, and yet this stock is proving to be unstoppable. So looking simply into 2021, where can you see the stock going, and are there any catalysts on the horizon? Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you think about pre-split, we're now at $3,500 per share, so that $7,000 price target's not looking so crazy anymore, is it? But um yeah, I think as we head into 2021, you know, obviously the the fair question for Tesla is is this company overvalued? I mean, as Jim said, 600 plus billion dollar market cap, Tesla's trailing 12 months revenue is about 28 billion dollars, so you know, they're trading at 21, 22 times sales, which is obviously quite high. Um but when you look at Tesla, you know, it's it's really a growth story. It's always been a growth story and um what, what Tesla has been able to accomplish has been, you know, I would say almost unprecedented. Um, if you look at compared to, you know, when Amazon was sort of in this stage of their growth, going from sort of a billion dollars up to around $25 billion or so, it took Amazon 10 years to do that. Tesla's actually done that in six. So they've grown at a 52% compound annual growth rate versus Amazon at this stage was growing at about 30%. So there's a reason that the market is paying that premium to Tesla. And if you think about, you know, as Jim said, what Elon Musk is doing here, Tesla is positioning themselves to address, you know, probably the largest total addressable market that we've ever seen a business go after. We've got the automotive market, the energy market. We've got as Tesla starts to develop their autonomous um, driving package and continue to roll that out. We've got obviously companies like Uber that Tesla would be in that market as well. We think about things like logistics once the Tesla semi comes on board, which to your question about things for 2021, uh, that's something for us to look forward to. So there's just so much to like here and so much going on that the market is, you know, they're willing to pay that premium. And especially as Tesla has flipped to sort of a profitability story this year and really shown that operating leverage as they've as they've scaled up and proven their viability to uh, be a sustainable business. So, Jim, Rob correctly points out there that Tesla is a growth stock. What would you what would it take to stop saying that it's a growth stock? Well, I mean, look, I think that a lot of this is execution. When we listen to Rob talk about the total addressable market, I mean, it's rather remarkable how big it really is. And my bet is is that Elon is thinking about what can be done in uh, 2021 that others are thinking about 2026. I mean, he has shown a tremendous ability to be able to anticipate what people want. I, I think that uh, as long as he delivers on his vision, it's a growth stock. When he stops innovating or when he leaves, if he ever leaves, it's not going to be a growth stock. I think you have faith in him that he's not trying to create a value play. He's trying to create an innovation play, and innovation leads to a higher stock price no matter what. Rob, we got the news that Tesla plans to open a plant here in Texas, in Austin, Texas specifically. I mean, how big is this for Texas in general as we see the Californians take flight? Yeah, it's huge. And that's kind of an underlying story, I would say, of 2020. You know, we've seen Tesla. uh, Well, Tesla hasn't moved their full operations out there uh, quite yet, but Elon Musk has decided to move to Texas from California. Um, A lot of other companies, I think Oracle just announced that they're sort of moving their headquarters too. So, you know, we're seeing a a little bit of a migration out of of California into sort of that Austin area. 
Uh, and yeah, Tesla's no different. They're setting up a factory there to start producing vehicles sometime in 2021, even though they just broke ground um, in August of this year. So their pace of you know expansion and execution has been uh, really taken sort of that next step over the last 12 months. And we've seen really seen that with Gigafactory Shanghai. You know, they broke ground on that January of 2019. Already by January 2020, 12 months later, uh, they rolled out the first vehicles, and now. You know, we have reports that in October they produced over 20,000 vehicles. So, you know, 250,000 vehicle run rate. Um, going from groundbreaking to that in, in two years is pretty unprecedented. So, you know, investors are really looking for them to replicate that in Texas. Um, Tesla's got a ton of land there. They hope to, you know, the reports are that they hope to eventually scale that up to about 2 million vehicles per year, uh, which is just insane output. Uh, the largest factories today for automotive are really around that 800, 900,000 per year level. So Tesla's got that going on in Texas. And then same thing in Berlin. They also broke ground on a gigafactory in Berlin uh, back in May and sort of similar timeline. So yeah, back to even the earlier question about 2021, there's a lot to be excited about there. So Jim, if I had to ask you for your biggest takeaway from Tesla this year, what would it be? Well, I think it would be uh, Tesla the stock or Tesla the, co the company. Uh, you too. I'd say what it is is breathtaking ability to do things that other companies can't do. When you listen to what Rob's talking about, you're not supposed to be able to create a factory in this short of time. You're not supposed to be able to produce things. The man makes what we think are outrageous claims, but what they really are are a well-defined system that requires, yes, a lot of grit. I'm sure if you were to Tesla, it may be overwhelming to work there, but these are remarkable. I mean, you go to Berlin, you go to the heart of automobiles and you put up a plant and I think it's going to produce the most unbelievable cars. And you say to yourself, how does he do it? I mean, geez, you know, a lot of these regular companies, I mean, you know, maybe they'd pick some sort of like, you know, uh, Elon had the initially he used the shell of, an, uh, you know, of, of another factory. But, but you're not supposed to be able to make things this fast. And that's the real takeaway for me is he surprises you in how great he is as a manufacturer. And in that sense, he is every bit of like uh, Henry Ford. He just makes cars, drives the price down, superior auto, and then puts it globally. I mean, this is just inconceivable that this person can do this. And Rob, what about you? What's your biggest takeaway? And also because you so specifically focus on Tesla, I want to ask if anything has surprised you this year. Oh, yeah. I mean, the stock price. <laughs> We've seen it jump 18 times since last June, the lows. You know, it was sitting there at $180 pre-split, so like 35 Eight, bucks, and now it's 18 at 60, times? 650. 18, 18 times. times. Probably even higher now at this point. But yeah. since the low. Okay, so, that's so, I mean, important. that's been crazy. I, w I would say the other thing that surprised me, uh, Catherine, is just the the amount of um, the great execution that we've seen from Tesla this year. So as I mentioned, Gigafactory Shanghai, the build out there has been really incredible. You know, Tesla received a lot of flack and some of it brought on themselves around the Model 3 ramp up. Obviously, you know, they put some really aggressive targets out there and they failed to meet some of those in terms of uh, timeline, you know, and production rates. So I think investors were, you know, pretty soured on sort of the the communication from Tesla and the targets that they put out there. I think Tesla really learned from that and they've started to be a little mm -hmm. bit more conservative in how they're talking to investors and how they're talking to the street. And I think we've seen investors, you know, regain confidence in Tesla because of that. Because now investors can say, okay, like Tesla has switched over to being a little bit more conservative. When they tell us a number, we can be confident that, you know, that's sort of the low benchmark and we can build that, build our um you know, our discounted cash flows or whatever else, our analysis off of that. So I think that's been huge for the stock. And then just the total execution, you know, Gigafactory Shanghai, uh, how successful that's been compared to the Model 3 ramp up uh, from Fremont initially. And then I would say Tesla's really executing on on their operating leverage and their gross margins. In Q3, we saw them post an all-time high operating margin of over 9%, uh, which is, you know, really strong for the automotive business. And that's really impressive for the scale that Tesla is at right now, you know, when we compare the market caps, Tesla's obviously the largest in the automotive business, but they're still a relatively small manufacturer. They hope to hit 500,000 vehicles this year. So to be able to sort of generate this leverage at this point in their, um, you know, in their growth and in their scale is is really impressive to me. And I think we're just going to continue to see that. 
And as Tesla expands globally in terms of their production, they're really, as Jim said, going to continue to focus on just lowering those prices, expanding their addressable market and, you know, getting the best product out there and just taking share as fast and as aggressively as they possibly can. Right. Well, I, <laughs> I certainly look forward to seeing what Tesla has to show us in 2021. Jim Kramer, Rob Maurer, thank you so much for joining us. And you can read more Great about holiday. our stocks of the years over on thestreet.com. Thank you.